Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to make a chunky knitted cowl. This is a really fun and easy project to make that works up quickly. The tools you're going to be needing for this project are four skeins of super bulky yarn and 25 millimeter knitting needles. They're huge. If it's helpful for you, I do have a written version of this pattern at my blog. Just check the description below for the link. My preferred method of knitting is continental style, and that's because I primarily crochet. It's much easier for crocheters to knit continental style because you're bringing the working yarn in from the left hand side, just like you do with crochet. So let's get started. We're going to begin by doing a long tail cast on of 15 stitches. So first I'm going to measure out about 56 inches or a yard and a half. And you'll notice here that I'm using two strands of yarn together. It's much, much easier than it looks. Next, I'm going to create a slip knot and insert my needle. When you're working with two strands of yarn, you're doing everything as you normally would. You're simply holding the two strands of yarn together as you work. That being said, I would not recommend this as a first project. You should go into it feeling confident in your ability to cast on, complete the knit stitch, and bind off. If you find yourself struggling with these beginner techniques, keep your eyes peeled and I will post any relevant detailed tutorials that I have as a link in the top right hand corner and also in the description box below. To keep my edges straight, I complete the first and last stitches different than most. For the first stitch, I knit through the back loop. I insert my needle through the back loop purl-wise, so that's from the right, under the yarn, and then through to the left. And then I scoop the yarn under that stitch and pull through. So I just pull that through pull that stitch off, and that's the first stitch completed. So let's take a closer look at that again. We're gonna go a little bit slower. Okay, so I'm going to go in through the back loop purl-wise. So I've got my needle just on the right side of the first stitch here, and I'm going to go underneath that stitch from the right to the left. And then I'm going to get my needle just around that yarn, the working yarn that's on my finger there, and I'm going to, I'm gonna position it a little better, and then I'm gonna pull that underneath of the back loop of the first stitch. I'm gonna take that whole stitch off, that stitch is complete, and then now we're able to move on working the subsequent stitches just as regular knit stitches. The only other change you need to make if you're choosing to do your first stitch in that way is to slip stitch the final stitch. So we're gonna knit across here and then I'll show you what that last stitch looks like. At the start of the next row, we'll go through all the steps in order again. The garter stitch is really easy. That's what we're working up here. It's just knitting every single stitch that you do. So you knit across, you turn, and then you knit again. And it is creating a fabric that is showing the front of the stitch and then the back of the stitch, and then the front of the stitch and the back of the stitch. And this helps to create the texture that we're seeing with this chunky cowl. I would go as far as to say that this pattern is not truly a pattern. It is more of a tutorial on how to make an oversized swatch of the garter stitch using the continental style of knitting. Uh, some of my favorite projects are that way because it's so easy to relax when you're doing something that's meditative and that doesn't really require your full attention. 
So yes, you are going to get a beautiful cow out of this, but I'm really more trying to teach you techniques that will allow you to make projects that are similar to this, but that have your own flair to it. Once you learn the basics, it's really easy to riff off of basic ideas, such as just a large bit of fabric made out of the garter stitch. For instance, if you wanted to make a smaller cowl, you could knit fewer stitches. You could cast on, say, about 12 stitches, and then do the same thing that I'm doing here, but with a fabric that has a smaller width. All right, so here we are at the final stitch. And what I'm going to do to slip stitch is just insert my hook and pull that stitch over. I love slip stitching, it's so easy. You just pull it to the other hook. Okay, so let's go over again how we do that first stitch of this row. And again, this is a technique, this is optional if you find it easier to knit across just as you traditionally would, that is 100% up to you. All right, so we've turned our work. Now I'm just gonna bring the working yarn to the backhand side. I'm gonna hold it with my left hand. I've got my first stitch ready to go. I'm a little off camera here, so let's come back up and put it into focus. And as you can see, I bring my needle in from the right hand side. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to grab the yarn that's on my pointer finger of my left hand. I'm then gonna pull that under. And then I'll slide the stitch off to the other needle. And then I come back in through the other side and knit as usual. So I know it's a little confusing because only the first stitch is different and then you slip stitch the very final stitch. Uh, but once you get in the habit of doing it, it's really helpful, like I say, to keep your edges nice and neat. Again, if it is easier for you to just knit across, that's perfectly fine. the final stitch here and I'm just going to slip stitch to complete this row. Carry on this way until the piece measures about 54 inches. And that's about 45 rows. Once you're done with that, I'll show you the final steps to complete this project. My piece now measures 54 inches and I'm going to begin binding off. Okay, and for our final step here, what we're going to do is we're going to fold this piece of fabric in half, hamburger style. I'm going to join the edges. I'm just going to make sure that my stitches loosely match up. If it's easier for you, you can use stitch markers to do this. There's lots of different ways. I'm just going to eyeball it. This is a chunky cow. There's a lot of fabric and texture going on here. So if I make a little mistake, it's not going to be very noticeable. 
If you've enjoyed this project or if I was able to help you out, please like and subscribe. It helps me out and it keeps the new content flowing. If you've got any tutorial requests, hit me up in the comments below. And if you've made your own version of this cow, I would love for you to tag me in a photo on Instagram. Until next time, my friends.